ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I was stuttering over my speech. Thank you so much for joining me once again, and welcome back to Nancy Drew Midnight in Salem. The kitchen table has a great view out into the neighborhood. Thank you, Nancy. Um, but we are here in Salem. Huh. Oh, there's candles and the Coco huh. Kringle. Uh, let's explore the house a little bit. Um, can I go get the clam chowder? I want clam chowder. Come on. Alright, um, do try to talk to you in a second. I gotta see where my room is. This is my room? Yes. Is there a little note? Oh. Tegan's photo. Coven. What does this mean? Coven. Huh. Should I go snooping through? A good night's rest improves memory retention, but it's too early for bed. Too early for bed. You're right. Even though bed sounds lovely right now. I'm I probably shouldn't be in May's room without an invitation. Probably not. Oops, wrong door. Wrong room. I just can't go snooping in the hall. Can I go up into the this way? Can I go to the left? Nope. Alright, turn around. Let's go talk. Uh, we'll try. Hang on. I'm just gonna see real quick. Oh. The controls of the game are kind of finicky. Uh, point and click adventure. If you haven't played a Nancy Drew game, it is a point and click. Oh, hi, May. <laughs> oh, look at all these lovely pictures. Rust be gone. Now that's handy. Never know when a bit of stubborn iron oxide will get in the way of investigating. Rust be gone. The Perrys recycle their paper waste. Good on them. Wait, what's this? Someone must have been upset. They tore this note up. Oh, okay. Oh, puzzle time. Okay, so let's expand all these out. Let's see what kind of, oh, there's all one of these. Okay. See where we're at. Let's go edge pieces. All right, let's see what we got. see what's what. Oh, there we go. There we go. Alright, so this has to be a side of one. There we go. There's that piece. Which means... Okay. 
I know. Oh, I think I know what this says. There we go. I think I know what this says. This says, I know. So somebody knows what's going on. And I'm doing this all right in front of May, too. Oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. What are you? <laughs> Found it. <laughs> Found it. <laughs> Is that an Found Easter egg? That is a legit Easter egg. I'll talk, try talking to you here in a second. Is there anything else? Deirdre's convertible. Looks strikingly familiar. Um, nice to meet you. Yeah. Do you mind if I look around the house? Oh, you're so weird. Oh, oh, she. Oh my god, you could see her face is like scarred up behind her eye. So, I found this letter. What is that? I found it in your trash. It says, I know. Yeah, I can read. So? So, I don't know what it is. Don't go through my trash. I'm so done talking, okay? Sorry, me. Hi. I'm done talking, okay? Okay, well. That's not great. Are you ready to leave yet? We don't have all day. What were you actually doing before you picked me up from the airport? What do you mean? You gave May a non-answer when she asked why it took you so long to stop by here. A non-answer? Yeah, because I went to the police station. And? And they're still going through the evidence. And when they found out I was May's cousin, they started laughing. So oh, they think no. she did it. Everyone does. So I went to check out the Hathorn house myself. But I never went inside. The ghost? What? No. There was some weirdo there who told me the ghost was going to steal my soul. It was totally creepy. And then I found out that everyone in this town believes in ghosts, so I didn't enter. Well, whatever mm. or whoever it is, there's an explanation behind it. Did the police give you anything? Anything at all? They told me there's a Judge Danforth in town, and he's going over the particulars of the Hathorn House estate. I found his office, but he kind of never let me enter his office. Believe me, I tried. I know him. Not well. But enough to get through his door and have a conversation. I know right. James Danforth. Are we going into town or what? Sure. Yeah, let's Who go. Who could gain something by burning down a house? Insurance claim, maybe? Maybe. Possibly. Means, motive, and opportunity. We need to start interviewing. See if anyone checks off those three boxes. And in your experience? It's usually something much more personal. This tour sounds interesting. Don't tell Tegan that's your plan. It'll give us a good overview of the town. It would. You mean I want to meet the real witch of Salem? Yeah, I do. She might know something. I wonder why Tegan doesn't like her. You don't have to investigate everything, Drew. Olivia I do, actually. Steals Tegan's visitors, sounds like. Do you really want to do the dumb tour? Yeah, actually, you I do. You don't have to come with me. Side by side. Gotta be honest, it does sound more fun than the museum. All right, let's see. Do I have any messages? Love you too. Love you too. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Oh yeah, this is picking the thing up or later. Um, let's. You know what? I'm gonna go make a phone call. Do I have anything in my gallery? Oh, I just had the one. <laughs> go home. And then I'm gonna go upstairs and make a phone call in private. 
I don't like people listening in on me. Okay, I can call Elizabeth. Let's call Elizabeth real quick. Hey, this is Nancy Drew. I have a couple more questions, if you don't mind. Oh, hello. I remember you, yes. Uh, sorry. Forgot about the time zones. Whoops. It's fine, it's fine. What did you want to ask me? Did you find any more secrets on A.W. inside Judge Sewell's desk? <laughs> Nothing you hadn't already uncovered. It's an intriguing design, however. One that would become popular throughout Europe a century later, under the famous German cabinet maker, David Röntgen. Okay. I wonder how Sewell managed to be ahead of his time. The ghost of carpentry yet to come? <laughs> what? Over it, the world <laughs> has always been filled with crafty artisans. Another example of mechanical trick vessels and furniture can be found much earlier. In the 12th century works of chief engineer Ismail Al-Tazari. Oh, I don't know, know, know I made it, it. okay. Wish I had the chance to crack the book of apologies, too. The A.W. lock. You have no idea what that could be referring to. I'm afraid not. I've looked up a few options but found nothing I consider plausible. I'm sorry I cannot be of more help here, but if you find out, please let me know. I'm very curious about this myself. All right, thanks anyway. I'm on it. Right, good. Any more questions? I have a couple, but I don't think I need to know any about anything right I'll now. I'll let you get back to your evening. Night? Thank you for taking time for me. It was nice talking to you again. You're welcome. Oh, please, stay in touch with any historical discoveries you make. I greatly appreciate it. Okay. Will do. So after the museum, I think I'll call her. Uh, I could call Tegan, May, Ned, Deirdre. I don't know how I got all those people's numbers, but let's call Ned and let him know where we're at. Hello. You've reached the voicemail inbox of Ned Nickerson. I apologize that I did not come to the phone in a timely fashion. Please feel free to leave a message after the beep. So don't... Nancy is like most people who doesn't leave a message. Uh, Carson. Yeah, I was just thinking about you. How's the investigation going? Any new leads? Hey, Dad. I feel like I'm making headway. Leaving no stone unturned? Never. Things aren't always what they seem. Yeah, I know that, Dad. I'm meticulous as always. Atta girl. Unfortunately, your good old dad has some cases of his own that require his attention. But keep me updated on your progress. Will do. Talk to you later. Love you. Love you too, kiddo. Bye. All right, see you later, Dad. Okay. Let's go on this tour. And now you call Ned. me back. Hi. Man, how have you been? Thanks for finally picking up. Uh, sorry, I've been on a flight. So Busy on another case, huh? You know, you should really enjoy yourself more, Ned. Hold on. Before th I continue this, Ned. Ned. I literally just called you and you didn't pick up. Funny how that works, right? <laughs> Ned, don't don't make me This upset. doesn't work for me. It's fun. Oh. Besides, crime doesn't take a vacation. Speaking of which, how's yours? Oh, you too. <laughs> Ned, come on. Yeah. Oh. Sounds like you are having fun. Uh-oh. Uh, you know, standard fare. Nothing too crazy. I miss you, Nan. I miss you. Hey, give it back. Two. Nancy, I'll call you later. Call you later, Nancy. Well, that was... Yeah. Huh. Oh, God. <laughs> Damn, sir. I think we should head right for the judge. What do you think? Yeah, let's go Sounds talk to good. the judge. Let's go meet the judge. Yeah, let's go. I want to see what's going on this way. Nothing. Could you not follow me so damn close? Oh my god, scare the hell out of me. Oh boy. Get a text? Hey Nancy, did you give me your number? 
Sorry about before I was stressed. Don't worry about it. Thanks for getting in contact. Where can I find the museum? Oh, you're so welcome to come by. We're on the opposite side of town square from the courthouse. Just turn right and go past the old cemetery. You can't miss it. Thanks for stopping by. Great. Alright, let's go into the... Oh! Visitors! By now you know the story of the witches of Salem. Those poor souls were caught in a time of fear and greed, and they paid the price. They may have died, but witchcraft lives on in Salem. Oh, this should be interesting. The world would have you believe witches were not real. I'm not talking about old, ugly women who curse their neighbors and fly on broomsticks. The truth is, magician? witches are real. They have always been real. They are alive and well. They are powerful, carrying the secrets of the world beyond the one we see. Ritual, mystery, magic. Most exist now only in secret, and they may be standing among you even now. It is said that in Salem, a coven of witches settled in recent years, set on revenge for the deaths of the Salem witches. Their ritual, one midnight on Halloween, unleashed the angry spirits of the past. That's so cool. <laughs> Thank you. Now, if any of you are interested in the real history of the Witches of Salem, I provide self-guided tours through some of my favorite locations in town. And perhaps you too will see one of the restless dead. I believe in Austria used the same kind of stage magic she's using. I was thief? just about to say that. There was a thief? What were you doing there? Visiting Long story. The old castle. Would have liked it. Do you regularly fly to Europe for investigations? Sometimes. I wish. And if you want to learn about being a witch, come forward. Hello. Uh-oh, here comes trouble. Me? Never. Well, nothing too bad, I hope. Did you know that in the Malleus Maleficarum, ginger hair was the sign of a witch? You're my kind of people. I'm not nearly as talented as you are. Aw, shucks. You're making... Shout out to Tinji McBeard. Enough said. <laughs> so to become a witch, do I need to take a, a test? A true witch is not made with pieces of paper. She is born to it and will feel the call. Bureaucracy is for persecutors. We don't need permission. We don't live by the rules. <laughs> anyway, what can I help you with? Holy shit. Okay. Um, how'd you perform that? How'd you perform that trick? <laughs> a witch never reveals her secrets. It's against the witch code. A code? I thought bureaucracy and rules were for persecutors. Although, Damn. if you take my self-guided tour, I promise you will learn at least one secret about being a witch. How often do you do this show? Most nights. It gets busier around Halloween. And I'm sure you can figure out why. How about the night that the Hathorn house was burned? <clears throat> you look a little young to be working for the police here. Oh no, it's nothing like that. We're just, just curious. curious curiosity. Good. Because I've already spoken with them. And so, you were here. I was out of town. Did you girls know that Salem is haunted? There's a ghost here. If you go on my tour, you'll learn where you can find it. Hmm. Uh, have you lived in have Salem a while? Lived in Salem for long, born and raised. So you know the Perrys, of course. Not well. If you are looking for them, Tegan is at the museum. She works there. Not well. We're staying with Tegan. I figured there was some history between you two. That was a long time back. We don't talk much now. Yes, I know her too. 
not spoken to her for a long time either. But you've heard the rumors about her. May is a troubled girl. And sometimes such girls get blamed for things that were not there. I don't think she burned down the Hathorn house if that's what you're trying to get at. People with mundane minds look for mundane explanations. Mm. Do you really believe some modern witch coven unleashed ghosts on Salem? About eight years back, there were rumors of a coven that they put coven that looks like this picture here. Turn the dead witches to Salem to seek out their revenge before the witches moved on. Is there any evidence of such a coven? Ever since then, ghost sightings have gone through the roof. Salem is now considered the most haunted place in the country. Interesting. You think it's a coincidence that the former home of the Hathorns was set on fire? How else could the fire have started? I heard there was not a single living soul in the house when it started burning. Keyword, living. The world is composed of two equal parts, dark and light. The light we see every day. It's the trees, the people, the birds. The music is loud. I'm going to turn it down here in a second. You can even see it at night. The dark is the unknown. A plane of existence that vibrates just underneath the light. But if you were in a place like Salem, a place where a painful history permeates every surface, every crack, every brick, and every tomb, the dark will appear, usually when you least expect it. That's why they say, don't be out past midnight in Salem. Midnight in Salem, she said the thing. The she said it. <laughs> reach out and take you. Also, did you know that Salem has more ghost sightings than any other this city guy is in super North America? If you want to learn why, you should go on my tour. I'll talk to you later. Talk to you later. Alright, what do you think, Deirdre? Deirdre? The museum is over there, across the square. That's where we can get the real witches' tour tickets. The judge's office is in that building. If we want to go see him first, dive into the case, I think we should head right for the judge. What do you think? Yeah, let's Sounds go talk good? to the judge. Yeah. Let's go oh, attempt to talk to the judge. Can I talk to random people? Nah. All right. That group is really chanting up a storm. Why are there protesters in a small town like this? I'm just gonna walk right past it. I'm turn that down. Okay. Let's talk to Judge Hazel. Yes, can I help you? Oh, hi. Hi. Sorry to bother you, but we were looking for Judge Danforth's office. Danforth, sorry. Just across the Not hall. Hazel. Why? What did you two girls do? We didn't do nothing. We didn't do. I'm kidding. Alicia Cole, Esquire. Hey, Alicia. Nice to meet you. I'm Nancy Drew, and this is Deirdre Shannon. You're a lawyer. Salem's best. The only practicing lawyer in the historic town limits, if you could believe it. And if you girls were in any trouble, I'd have no problem representing you. You both have that innocent look. <laughs> Juries love it. So you're saying we could get away with a crime? We? No? Partners in crime? Side Sorry by side. To you, Ms. Cole. <laughs> we'll check in with the judge. Have a good evening. Okay, there's the evidence thing, probably. Ah. <laughs> You'd really become my enemy if I committed a crime? Sorry. You shouldn't joke about that. Yeah, that's not a Why? thing we joke about. You gonna arrest me? Don't tempt me. No, but I'd call the police to report you. I'd also recommend you a decent lawyer. 
because I'm an excellent witness for the prosecution. Wow. I'm a lawyer's daughter, Deirdre. Don't mess with me. Damn. Hello? Judge Danforth. Yeah. Hello. Ted? Is that you? Ted? Um, no, Your Honor. My name is Nancy Drew. I think you've spoken with my father. Nancy Drew? Carson's daughter? Yes. And I'm with my friend Deirdre Shannon. We're investigating the arson of the Hathorn house. Ah, yes, yes. Can we come in? Well, you see, no, I mean, I'd let you in, but I seem to have been locked in my office and I, uh, I need some help getting out. Do you know where I could find a key to your office? Yes, I believe I gave a copy of the key to Alicia Cole as backup. She's just down the hall. I hope she's still here. Okay, let's go. Wasting a little time. Alicia, hi. Yes, can I help you? He said you might have a key. <laughs> Sorry, I gave him my spare. Oh, great. Unbelievable. Does this ever end? Oh, well then, do you have a paper clip? Yeah. And if you don't mind me asking, what business do you two have with the judge? We're helping the judge with a case. Anything I can assist you with? Thanks, but I think we got it. No need for a lawyer. Yet. At least, not yet. <laughs> Alright. Uh, good job, Nancy. Let's do this, then. Hello? Judge Danforth. I'll come back. Judge Danforth? I couldn't find your key. What? Uh, Alicia said she'd keep a copy for me. Well, I did find a paper clip. I think I can pick your lock, if that's okay with you. Yeah, sure, fine. All right, lock picking time. Okay, hold and drag the this pin. This shouldn't be too much of a challenge. Hold to drag the pin. Feel for the pin that gives, res that gives resistance. Okay. Okay. Okay, come on. Okay, so I gotta move this one up. This one. Okay, so it's four. Four. Come on. Oh. Four. Okay, so let's do four. Efficient. How did you learn to do that, actually? Don't worry about it. Online video tutorial. Someday you have to tell me about your secret life of breaking and entering, Drew. Calm down. Because you're in danger of being cool. Which, honestly, I just don't like. Someday. Alright, let's talk to the judge. Hello. Ah, those protesters are out there again. Stirring the pot. You know... This town used to be a quiet place, but it seems lately there's been an element that has infiltrated our community. I have no doubt one of those troublemakers locked my door and threw away the key. Now, Nancy, your father and I have discussed. Oh, sorry, I'm not Nancy. Of course you're not. You look nothing like Carson. 
Did your father ever tell you about the time we won fourth place at the Lake Winnipesaukee Regatta? <laughs> you see, at the time I had 2010 vision, so I was the navigator and... Judge, this is Deirdre Shannon. She's working with me on the case. Deirdre, you're the one who tried to break down my door. Oh. Break down? Your honor, that's an exaggeration. I was knocking. Heavily. Look, I'm really busy. Dealing with this Hathorn house business. Uh, being a judge is not as simple as, uh, you know, investigating during your free time. Well, we just used our free time to unlock your door. So I'm sure you'll be willing to repay us with some answers to our questions. Right? <clears throat> yes, of course. What can I help you girls with? Good job, Deidre. Um... Told that the burning of Hathorn House is suspected to be a case of arson. How did the police come to that conclusion? The investigation found paint solvent residue on burnt embers, suggesting someone deliberately used an accelerant. Thankfully, Mrs. Tuttle never had to see what became of her home. Mm. And what evidence do you have that May Perry is the one responsible for this? Evidence? Have you ever heard of recidivism? Three out of four criminals in the United States are repeat offenders. And there's only one person in all of Salem who has a history of fire-related crime. So, there is no evidence. They're just assuming. Yet, but there will be. That's you circumstantial at best. She's already been convicted in the court of public opinion. Is that what she said? No, I'm saying it. She has a history with this sort of thing. What's May's motive? What does she gain by burning down the Hathorn house? You'd have to ask her. And while you're at it, you can ask about her alibi, which she refused to give to the police. So, any other questions? I do, actually. Can you explain to us how you're involved with the Hathorn house? Well, yes. The house was built by Judge John Hathorn during the 1600s, and it represented the oldest surviving structure from that era. Judge Hathorn, of course, was one of the three judges that presided over the Salem Witch Trials. Yes, and I'm sure we can read all about the home's history in Salem's museum. More recently, Francis Tuttle, Judge Hathorn's last direct descendant, lived in a small section of the house while the rest was left to fall into considerable disrepair. She was alone, except for a part-time caregiver, Lauren Holt, who had a bedroom in the carriage house. <clears throat> a few months ago, Francis Tuttle passed away, which left Hathorn House without a legal heir. According to the historical statutes of Salem, after 90 days, the house reverts to public property, the deadline of which is two days from now, at midnight. Hmm. So, how did Francis Tuttle pass away exactly? The woman was 88 years old. The coroner confirmed her death was of natural causes. So they never investigated Lauren Holt. You need the suspicion of foul play to investigate someone, young lady. We'd like to speak with her all the same. She still lives on the estate, although for how much longer we do not know. You can also find her in her shop, Luminous Infusions. She might be willing to talk to you. Hmm. And the Book of Apologies. So the Book of Apologies. Why did you really need it? <clears throat> yes. And first of all, I'm so glad you're all right. Nasty business. Had I known you were going to be put in harm's way, I would have never called Carson and asked for his help. I've done plenty of work for my father. He trusts me. He does. I can handle myself. Yes, I'm sure you can. So I've already heard some stories. But would you mind giving me your version of why the book is important? Yes. So, Judge Sewell was rumored to keep a ledger of all the accused, intending to publish it to reconcile with their families and clear their names. But he passed away before he could do so. Going to Austria for a rumored book seems like a heck of a long shot. <laughs> well... I have been under some pressure from the A.W. group. A.W. group? A.W. as in accused witches. Ah, okay. 
Don't you think it's dangerous throwing around May's name as a suspect before any evidence links her to the crime? Uh, what do you mean? What are you saying? That you're wrong. <laughs> described, there is no evidence against May. Yet you were saying that she did it. I just... As a judge, I think you would be the first to admit that sounds prejudicial. It is not just me, Miss Drew. There are plenty of people who believe that May is responsible for this crime. It is not prejudice when she is the only likely suspect. Actually, that is the definition of prejudice. I'm not going to have this debate with you. Is there anything else? Talk to you later. Miss Drew, before you go, there is something else I need your help with. You're not locked out of your car, are you? Oh, no. <clears throat> there was a... There was an incident here recently. Someone broke into the evidence room. Oh. Have you called the police? Well, no, not yet. I don't think anything was taken. Never mind. I'll, I'll call the police. Thank you for your time. Thank you for yours. What's all that about? What do you think, Deirdre? Maybe we can learn something about the town. Might help May's case. Okay. Uh, well, we're gonna do that in the next video. What do I have? Go on the witch tour, talk to Deegan about the museum. Okay. All right. I am going to leave this episode here because, save. Boink. Uh, so we talked to the judge, figure out a little bit going on, and it seems like they have really no case against May. But we're going to find out more about it here in the next coming few episodes. And we're going to check out the museum next time. Alright, I'm Ben Cruz. This is the channel where I do stuff. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I will see you guys next time where we explore the museum in Salem. See ya!